In this video, we learn how to calculate the mean ionic activity coefficient from the Weichel theory for electrolytes. Right, we have seen that ionic solutions tend to deviate from ideality to a much larger extent than non-electrolyte non solutions do. So then, uh, uh, we're going to handle these ionic solutions by using something that is called the mean ionic activity coefficient. And the definition of this um, mean ionic activity coefficient we have seen in a pre uh, previous video. Now what we're going to do now uh, is just try to calculate this mean ionic activity coefficient using the well-known the Weichel theory of electrolytes. We're not going to see how the equation is derived uh, in full. Instead we're simply going to see what the main approximations of the theory are and then we're going to carry out a numerical example to see how this device Hickel theory can be applied to calculate this gamma plus minus. Right, so the device Hickel theory of electrolytes, uh, this version that we're going to see, has two main approximations. The first one is that when you have uh, an ionic compound in solution, uh, it fully dissociates, right? So there's no partial dissociation. Uh, the degree of dissociation will be one or a hundred percent. Now, uh, in addition to that, the version that of the theory that we're seeing requires the solutions to be dilute. Okay, so this would not work for uh, heavily concentrated solutions. Now, uh, the basics of the theory are pretty st straightforward. Uh, imagine that you have an ion in solution, right? The, the main tenet of the theory is that every time that you have an ion in, sol in solution of some charge, in this case, positive charge, Right, there's going to be an ionic atmosphere of countercharge. And what this ionic atmosphere is, is just simply uh, a, a concentration of negative uh, charged ions in this case that tend to be closer to that neg uh, to a positive ion than elsewhere in solution. Now, this ionic atmosphere should not be interpreted to be as something rigid in which the negative ions are going to be always close to the positive ion. Instead, this is going to be something that is that will be fleeting, right? So there will be water molecules intervening between the ions, but again, uh, and that, that ionic atmosphere will, will be always destroy, be, being destroyed, always being created. Again, I guess that the, that the, the picture that has to develop in your mind is that there's, there's an excess of negative charge uh, surrounding every positive charge that you have in solution and the other way around. And that is what we call an ionic atmosphere. Now, the effect of this unit atmosphere is to stabilize the ion, right? So this positive ion that we have right here, uh, yes, due to the presence of that ionic atmosphere of countercharge, is going to be stabilized in solution. And that stabilization is going to reduce its chemical potential. Okay, so uh, what will always uh, happen then is that this activity coefficient plus minus is always going to be less than one. Okay, because you have less chemical potential, uh, you're able to do fewer things uh, for a given concentration uh, if your activity coefficient is less than one. Okay, so after that introduction, we can simply just write uh, the bare bones, uh, the Weichel uh, equation to calculate this mean ionic activity coefficient, and then we'll do a numerical problem to see how it works. Okay, so for water uh, at 298 Kelvin, the calculation of the uh, activity coefficient can be done as follows. This is going to be the base 10 uh, logarithm of that mean ionic, ionic activity coefficient. This is the constant, and this constant will change according to solvent and according to temperature, so this just only applies for aqueous solutions at 298 Kelvin. Okay, so it's a constant times the product of the charges, Z plus times C minus, and that will be the absolute value of that product, okay, multiplied by the square root of capital I, and capital I is what we call the ionic strength. Uh, right, so let's then write an expression for that ionic strength. This ionic strength is simply one half, and then the sum over all of the ions in the solution of uh, the molality of that ion in the solution divided over the reference molality, okay, multiplied by the charge of the ion squared. Okay? So again, these equations are going to be uh, exemplified as we run a numerical example, and the numerical example is going to be as follows. We're going to calculate 
what the mean ionic activity coefficient of sodium carbonate is at a concentration which is going to be uh, 0.030 molal. Okay, so we're going to have again sodium carbonate which we're going to put in solution to generate uh, two sodium ions in water and one carbonate ion in water and the initial concentration is 0.030 molal. Okay, so that it will be moles per kilogram of solvent. Now the first thing that we do is to uh, then try to uh, do the stoichiometry to figure out what the molality of each one of the ions in solution would be. Notice that by stoichiometry for each mole of sodium carbonate you have two moles of sodium, right? So the molality of sodium ions in solution is 0.060 molal and then uh, of carbonate will be 0.030 molal. Okay, so that's what we have to do here. All right, so then let's try to calculate uh, first the ionic strength of the solution uh, because we need that in order to calculate what the uh, mean uh, ionic activity coefficient would be. All right, so again, notice that this is going to be one half of the sum of the molalities of each ion in solution divided by the reference molality, which is just one molal, and then multiplied by the charge of that ion squared. In this solution, we only have two ions, sodium and carbonate. Uh, you could actually have more ions, right? You could, uh, you could try to dissolve this sodium carbonate uh, uh, salt in a solution that already contains some other ions, maybe calcium chloride or something else. If that was the case, then uh, that extra ions in solution would be incorporated into this ionic strength. But in this particular problem, because we only have uh, these two, two ions in the solution, then the ionic strength is only going to have two components. All right, so uh, the sodium component, starting with sodium, would be the molality of sodium divided over the reference concentration. So 0 0.060 molal divided over one molal, and then multiply by the charge squared, plus one squared. And then the other component, the other ion, will be carbonate, which is in concentration of 0 0.030 molal, divided over the reference concentration which is one mole, and then multiplied by the charge squared, which will be minus two squared. Okay, notice that uh, the presence here of the reference concentration, the only thing that it does is just cancels out the units of the molality of the concentration, and what that means is that your, your, your ionic strength will be dimensionless, and that is something that you need because your mean ionic activity coefficient is also dimensionless, right? So that's the trick here with this reference concentration. All right, after we do all that, we find an ionic uh, strength, which is equal to 0 0.090. Okay, and again, this uh, is dimensionless. And then uh, the only thing that remains to do here, that, that remains for us to do, is to calculate what that activity coefficient would be. So uh, let's plug in all of the numbers here. Minus 0 0.509 and then the absolute value of the product of the charges, so that will be uh, the charge of sodium, the charge of carbonate, and the absolute value of this is going to be two, and then the square root of 0 0.090, which is your ionic strength, okay? When you do that, uh, okay, notice that uh, what you will be calculating here is the base 10 logarithm of that mean ionic activity coefficient, right? So you have to uh, calculate, obtain uh, y, uh, gamma plus minus from that uh, base 10 uh, logarithm, right? But after you do that, you find that this activity coefficient is 0 0.49, okay? Notice how uh, this activity coefficient is actually quite far away from one, uh, which would signal the uh, you know ideal behavior. And we are actually getting so far away from ideality even with a solution that is very dilute, notice that the concentration that we have right here is only 30 millimolal. Okay, so again, that's just a, a, a nice example of how ionic solutions tend to deviate from ideality readily. Okay, so, so it's going to be almost impossible to find ideal ionic solutions. We're always going to have this, uh, uh, to take into consideration this mean ionic activity coefficients.
Okay, so uh, let me wrap up this video. Uh, in this video, we have seen how to obtain a mean a unique activity coefficient from the Debye-Hickel theory of electrolytes.